YouTube, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage here, and welcome back to Ancient Carthage, circa 219 BC. Like I said, this uh, time frame is actually getting very close to when the actual Second Punic War took place. The Germanians have turned against us. No big surprise here. I don't think they really had any loyalty to us to begin with, um, but they've turned against us, and Heir finds himself in yet another war. But this is total war, is, is it not? Last time I checked, it was, um, and so <laughs> war were declared, and I should say war were expected at this point, because it is. So anyway, we are in a continuing fight. We have troops near Egypt. Egypt is amassing troops near Memphis. We are no doubt going to end up in some pretty epic standoffs over here. I'm attempting to get some work done at Cyrene. Um, to have it be in better shape to support a war. Having a city barracks here um, would be pretty good. I'm trying to work on getting to skirmishers, other things, so I probably should have upped the recruitment capability of Cyrene earlier, but was busy on other things. Now, some people have mentioned, Eric, can't you take an army via sea to Egypt faster than land? We can. But I already have multiple commanders over here, and so we'll make do with what we, what we can, um, and we'll attempt to start to make some inroads into Egypt. Someone also mentioned that I sent my uh, I sent my diplomat way around when it looks like Macedon may own some territory here, and that is very true. They might. I can't tell, though. It's almost like that's blacked out, so I'm not sure if that means that Macedon owns it. I know Macedon's in control of basically everything over here in Greece proper, and it looks like the Macedonians are doing a decent job of keeping them busy while I siege out Thermon and take control of it, and that should actually end up extincting the Brutii faction. Um, the Gauls have three settlements left that I am aware of, though that may have potentially changed. Uh, but at the moment, we have to deal with the Germanians. I'm hoping if I can deal them some defeats, uh, take a settlement or two from them, that they may calm down and shut up for a while, while I continue to focus elsewhere. But, I don't know. Like I said, we, we will see. We will see how that goes. Um, I need a watchtower out here. Thought we had probably already put one here, but I guess not. Let's put in a watchtower on our way through here. I haven't done a perfect job of getting all the fog of war off the screen. Ah, oh, crap. There's rebels out here. That's irritating. They don't have, it's just a captain, and he's just got some skirmishers, peasants, and some more Numidian javelin men. I could just grab some mercenaries here. And I think just with this mercenary cavalry, I should be able to bowl over these peasants. I'm going to go ahead and kill them while I'm out here. And then I might drop a watchtower here as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and start by fighting this battle. And then we'll have other things to take care of. I don't know about you all, how, how are you enjoying this game so far if, if you are playing it? I would love to hear what you think in the comments. If you are busy playing this game, um, playing your own campaigns, what you think. I'm having so much fun with this remaster. Uh, is it perfect? Nope. There's quite a few issues. We had a lot of issues with multiplayer matchmaking the other day. Um, the AI is still dumb as a sack of rocks. Probably hard to fix that, honestly, without just ripping the code apart, which then basically changes the game. Um, but, you know, all, all this stuff's dead. I I'm having a whole lot of fun with this game. Like, a lot of fun. And um, it's pretty impressive that something this old and this flawed um, can really be so fun. And I, I really do enjoy it a lot. I am having a great time with it. It's a great way to have some fun while I continue to wait on the arrival of Warhammer 3, which is obviously my most anticipated um, upcoming Total War title. Not to say that I wouldn't be excited about anything else in Total War, but Warhammer 3 is definitely the one that I'm anticipating the most and looking the most forward to. I'm just going to charge all these peasants from various angles. There we go. I figured that with the cavalry this would be a very easy mop-up operation, and indeed it was. I'm going to turn off fire at will for my Numidians so that they don't kill a bunch of my own men with their javelins. And we're gonna just do a little fast forward action here and run down all the routing rebels. 
There goes the rebel captain. My general's doing the weird ride beside the unit rather than ride it down. You can just give him a movement order and correct that, and it usually fixes the problem rather quickly. It's it's some kind of old pathfinding thing with this game. There we go. Zero remaining. That's exactly the right number of rebels remaining. So we did well there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'd love to hear what you all think. Um, I haven't had any issues with crashing in, like, campaigns. There was a crash issue when I played some multiplayer the other night, and I want to say that I had heard that the game had had some negative reviews on Steam because of crashes. Um, like I said, I haven't experienced these crashes. Doesn't mean they don't exist. No. Like, I also wasn't getting crashes on my Radeon drivers, like, a little over a year ago when everybody was reporting it with the 5700 XT. I didn't get those, but other people did. <clears throat> I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why things happen that way, but it does. So again, I'm not delegitimizing it if people say that that's happening to them. I'm just saying it hasn't happened to me, and I'm only reporting that just to say that, um, you know, it's not obviously 100% across the board happening for everybody. All right, so we've got peasants moving through. Oh, there's another rebel stack out here. Yeah, we're going to have to put some watchtowers in out here as well. I'm going to go over here and uh, douse these rebels. While we're waiting. Because um, I'm trying to put together a garrison to hold Siwa. It's just that they have very little population. So that's why I'm transferring peasants out here. In fact, this peasant can already be disbanded. It will hit the population of Siwa. There it goes. This one just needs to move across the border. Um, let's see. Let's go to Italy. I'm retraining Hannibal's army. There's just a few units missing that we're working on getting retrained. Um, there'll be one horseman that doesn't get fully retrained, but I may go ahead and push Capua. I want to break out of southern Italy and start heading north. And then, um, up here at, uh, Massilia, we are retraining Bomilcar's army, which had a pretty epic battle to get out of northern Italy. He was in a very dangerous situation. He's now our faction leader. Uh, he's pretty old, too, so I don't know how much longer he's going to last. I think we moved all of his followers over to Juba. And then I've got another commander here who's very young and able to help out on this front. And we'll train him up at Massilia here soon. But uh, at the moment, we're retraining Bomilcar's army. And I'm trying to see... It looks like I am retraining troops and then trying to get some Libyan spears recruited as well, just to have a bit of heavier infantry, and that's probably not a bad idea. I need my movement points so that we can fight Captain Brino here and try and beat back the Germanians. They have a family member a little bit further up here, Gunderic of Noria. So we'll have to fight him soon too. Let's go ahead and end our turn. This, this is my army that's going to be out placing watchtowers and kind of patrolling Africa. I had my merchant heading to Oska to set up some trade. Oh, I forgot to look at my building situation. Whoops. Oh boy, Macedon's there with the reinforcements. They have two full stacks outside Thermon. I'm gonna give them that settlement. Um, I may end up regretting it, but I'm gonna end up. I'm gonna give them Thermon because uh, it'll just be a way to reinforce our alliance, and then I don't have a settlement sitting out there on its own, right in the middle of their territory. Uh, I'm gonna send this general and his town watch. And I am going to quick save this just in case they were to kill my general. But outside of that, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. This is why we use the quick save feature. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to understand how the auto resolve gets that result. The, these people are outnumbered 2 to 1. They do not have an actual commander. They're outnumbered 2 to 1, and all they have is peasants and warband. The warband are moderately better than my town militia, and maybe almost none by the time you put in the bronze armor and weapon upgrade. And I have a commander with a bodyguard of 49 men. Like, I just... How? Like, how does it even get to that conclusion? How? I don't understand it. 
I wish I knew how this works so I could better predict these things, but I figured it would give me some losses I didn't deserve, but a defeat? Like, I was quick saving it mostly just so we didn't get our general killed by RNG, but a defeat. Like, I'd actually call the defeat here. Their bowels weaken and turn to water, and their hearts quake within their chests. Oh man, that Falcata looks sweet. I need a Falcata. I don't know why, but I need one. <laughs> I guess I could use it as a machete when I'm out on my, my land trying to clear things or camping or something. Um, Alright, so let me show you just how easily we're going to defeat the AI here, okay? Like, I mean, it, it is not even going to be a challenge. This is going to be easy beyond easy. I'm going to take three units, triple up on them. And then a couple units to tr go after the peasants. This will be the most extraordinarily easy victory that we have seen from my forces in quite a long time. The peasants are chasing my general, and they won't catch him. I'm actually kind of surprised this warband hasn't already routed, but they are losing decisively. So they will be gone soon. Peasants just routed. The war band routed. Yep, this is unfolding just like the auto resolve expected. Just like they expected. Give me a break. What a joke. There we go, I'm gonna kill all these peasants. Goes the enemy general. Alright. There's going to be few, if any, survivors from this fight. Maybe none. <laughs> yeah, zero survivors. Alright, yeah, auto resolve was pretty close. Clear victory, narrow defeat, what whatever. Yeah, you know, it's pretty close. Pretty close. Auto resolve was fairly accurate. And the way that was depicted. So, again, I'd love to understand how the auto resolve assumed that it was going to overcome the odds there. Like, I mean, it just, it, again, it'd be curious. Like, did they expect me to send my troops just like maybe like one at a time straight into their loving, waiting arms? You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what was the, what was the calculation process there? Hopefully we can get a promotion for this guy if we go defeat this uh, rather large German army because uh, you can end up picking up a bodyguard sometimes by winning battles with an army that doesn't have one and the captain being promoted, which I would love to have at this point. Now, there are a few units we need to be careful of here. Screeching women can demoralize um, the units around them and you have to be very careful, especially if they show up on a flank. These are axemen, not night raiders, which is good for me because, again, night raiders have a scare effect. Um, and you have to be very careful of that. So the Germanians were one of those factions that I wouldn't say they were supremely powerful in the game, but if you disrespected some of their capabilities, they would wrap you up in a big hurry with something like Berserkers or Night Raiders or something like that. They have a lot of com like units that get combat bonus in the woods and snow. Fighting them in those conditions will make your life considerably more challenging. Um, so again, they were a cool this barbarian faction in the game. To celebrate victory. I promise you that. I also promise you the warm company of appreciative camp followers. But before any of that, there's something I'd like you to do for me. What's that? Win the battle? I I'll bet it's win the battle. I don't know why he stops the speech there. <laughs> uh, sorry, having a little bit of fun at the expense of the writing in the game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, spearmen on the flanks. And then let's get all of our cavalry units. Um, I'll get them grouped up over here. Um, this should work right there. This formation will do. Alright, let's go. Your reinforcements are here. But will they be enough for final victory? 
Probably, but I uh, don't need any reinforcements. Oh, they have some Spear War Band. I forgot these units function like a Phalanx unit. That was another thing that made the Germanians a little bit unique. Now, they were nowhere near on the level of a Phalanx, you know, from like one of the Greek or um, successor states. Like, you know, the Macedonian successor states. They weren't anywhere near that level of capability. But, um, they're gonna be useful in a battle like this, where my Iberians are still not going to want to fight them head-on. You know what I mean? Like, that is, that is not going to be a fight that I'm interested in. I'm gonna use my skirmishers to, uh, do some damage to their spear war bands. They do have shields. Crap, I didn't mean to get into this. Crap, crap, crap. Get out of there. Put some pressure on these Axemen. And while our skirmishers do some work up front. Because our objective here is to basically completely and totally ignore... We want to ignore the um, spear war bands. And start crumbling the flanks. That's how you deal with a phalanx head-on. So you use your skirmishers. I'm going to fall back a little. Because, see, I'm going to refuse them the engagement that they want. And I'm going to take the engagement that I want out here. And make the Germanians start to pay a hefty toll on the flanks. So they're losing a lot of axemen. Let's keep away from that phalanx, though. And then the next thing we'll do, when, when it does come time to deal with the phalanx units, let me show you how to do that. You're going to need two infantry units. And like I said, you just you keep your infantry within striking range. But we don't want to overcommit to this fight. Push up a little bit again. There's a warhound unit back here. This is actually not what I want at the moment. Let's go ahead and fall back for just a second with the Iberians. I do have a, a Libyan Spear unit. This fight's starting to take place... Are they fleeing? I don't think so. I'm gonna go engage the Barbarian Cavalry with my Libyan Spear. And I'm gonna let my Skirmishers... They have used most of their ammunition. Alright, I'm gonna begin a process of starting to mop this up. Let's team up on the Warhounds here, knock them out of the fight. My Libyan Spears will easily slice through this Barbarian Cavalry. I was thinking that was a Noble Cav, but I forgot this army is not led by a proper family member. So my Libyan Spears won't have any trouble wrapping that up. I'm uh, messing up just a little bit over here. I gotta pull away from this Phalanx. What you want to do is charge the Phalanx from behind while just keeping a unit nearby to fix their attention. Back over here. Need an infantry out here. Here we go. This is what we want. Now we have this um, spear war band where we want it. See? I'm going to keep refusing to attack it from the front. And I'm following it from behind. I'm going to just hit these screeching women. Cavalry charge. I'm going to keep falling back. From the spear war band. I can now hit this spear war band from two directions. That screeching women unit got overwhelmed by cavalry. This spear war band is wavering because they're attacked in the rear. Now we can complete the encirclement. Start to encircle this unit here. Yep, see, we got another route going there. This one's encircled. Screeching women are screeching. As well, they should. Things are about to go south for them in this battle real quick. Now, this warband is putting up an amazing fight here. I can't believe they aren't breaking. Send one unit this way. Yep, we got that all cleaned up. Let's head up here. The spear warband's now surrounded. All right, so we've got... Yep, all these units surrounded, so this is definitely the way we wanted this battle to go. I don't think it was perfectly executed on my part, but it was fairly well executed. And uh, this is a good way to... Good grief, killed a lot of my cavalry there, but we got them. This is a good way to deal with um, 
a phalanx heavy army. Uh, like I said, even though the Germanian Spear War Band is not near as good as, say, like their Greek or, you know, successor state counterparts, as a typical rule in this game, you just don't take a Phalanx head-on unless you have a better Phalanx unit. Um, and in that case, feel free to take them head-on, because your better Phalanx unit will do pretty well. Um, so, like, for instance, if you have Spartan Hoplites and you go head-to-head -head with Spear War Band, Spear War Band are going to get absolutely shellacked. Um, like, they, they will get owned. Um, so, you know, it just depends, uh, or let's say that, for instance, you have Royal Pikemen taking on Militia Hoplites, you know, again, not going to be a problem. Uh, that's just a couple of points of advice here as you go through this, but when it comes to non-Phalanx Infantry, taking Phalanx Infantry head-on, avoid it at all cost. There are some times where it will work, like an Urban Cohort or a really heavy Roman unit. If you have a slightly wider formation, than the phalanx, your troops will start kind of enveloping it just a little bit and fighting with swords with the units on the flank while your main units have enough defense skill that they just don't die quickly. And um, even by just not dying quickly, they're able to um, start killing an entire phalanx unit. I've seen it happen back in the day playing multiplayer, where an urban cohort would totally kill off um, a phalanx unit from the front but it's just because of the way the formation worked. They would have a slight surround, and they were killing the units in sword-on-sword -sword combat on the flanks. Um, so I'm going to retrain this army, so we'll be ready to, to go out and lash out at Germania. And then I'm going to come up here to help reinforce the garrison at Samarob... However you pronounce this. It's many letters. <laughs> the city of many letters. <clears throat> we're going to need some uh, temples here. And sewers and all kinds of stuff to help shore up the uh, the population. I might go with sewers just because growth here is actually going to be kind of important because we may need to do a lot of recruiting from both these settlements. Uh, Alicia has a lot of uh, population, which is good. We're going to need it, I think. Let's see what this army looks like. I have one Libyan Spear. I'm going to get a second Libyan Spear. This army is still not really equipped as well as I would like it to be, but it will probably get the job done. Um, this army is retrained enough. I think I'm missing eight horsemen, but that is not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and bring this garrison back to Croton, and let's get Hannibal on the march to Capua, try and take the capital city off of the Scipii. <laughs> Yeah, the Broody Eye are in big trouble here. They really ought to have attacked me much earlier. My faction heir is quite old, too. He could die out here at any point, too. So be aware of that. That army will lose some strength when that happens, but should still be totally capable. We can fight the... Oh, good, we sunk two more ships in that Roman fleet. So we have decimated the Julii fleets. And now I would say we probably have pretty safe naval supremacy once again. I don't think there's any Inquirems in this fleet either. What do we got here? Uh, let's go attack the Gauls. I want to stay on top of enemy fleets in this area. No one sunk anybody's ships, but we did some pretty good damage. The Scipii have a fleet over here. I'm gonna fight it too. And I was bringing these ships back to be retrained. This is where my heavies are at, I believe. Thought I had heavy ships. Oh yeah, I did. Okay, only one of them, I guess, had any damage on it. I only have a couple of heavy ships in that fleet. It's like the uh, Julii are about to drop an army off on me, so it's not good. Not really good. Um, what I could do is uh, start training some troops here, and then I can disband the peasants to make up for the population draw that we're going to take on here. So let's start to put together some Iberians to help defend Carolus, and if I need to, I can send this army from Lily Bayum over to reinforce Carolus. It shouldn't be the end of the world. Plus, Carolus has um, decent defenses. We've got so much cash, and we need to spend it all. Let's get some uh, large stone walls going in Carthage. And at Thapsus, let's do the same. 
Let's go to Careless, and let's start stone walls at Careless. That'll make it harder for enemies to siege us. Then at Syracuse, let's go ahead and invest in some defenses as well. Let's do the same at Sirta. Scalabus. Um, yeah, look, public order bonus due to loss. Sweet. Comes from the academy now. Awesome. I love it. We'll start putting those academies on. It's not going to be a huge bonus, but, you know, it's a bonus, and it's nice to have. And plus, if you end up with a governor there, it's quite good for the governor um, because they can potentially pick up better retainers and stuff to kind of, like, represent that they're spending some time learning at the academy while they're there. It's really a neat, a neat building. Let's see, Masana is pretty well... Let's go ahead and build the large temple because of the sacred band. Asturica, we'll go ahead and put it in an academy. Can't do anything at Nepte, at Narbo. Um, let's go ahead and keep suppressing the population there. And then we've got armor. Let's build that. What do we got here? Tingi. See what we can't do anything. Okay, good. Boy, we've got cash. Like, we have cash. Alright, there's the rebels. Can't attack them this turn, so we'll have to wait. I'm gonna move my peasants over here, disband them. So our migration program continues. And it is adding some much needed population to Siwa. They've got a decent growth rate right now, too, so they'll be adding some population per turn as well. Some of you may be wondering, Eric, how come you're not attacking the Egyptians? Um, well, first of all, they got plague. I don't want to catch that. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of just waiting until I'm in a better position to. I have this extra army at Cyrene now that can probably go ahead and head over um, to help protect Siwa while the other two armies go fight um, against the Egyptians. I don't love the armies that I have to fight Egypt. They're okay. They're not near as strong as I would like, is what I should be saying. Enemy army routes. Excellent. Good news. Retraining here. We made our move there. So yeah, I think um, I think we just need to end a turn here. Oh, I forgot to build a watchtower out here. Crap. I wish I could escape and like get my turn in. Maybe one of these guys will get their path blocked, and then I'll get a chance to, uh... Yep, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> that happens sometimes. When the path gets blocked, it'll stop the turn-in process. Let's go ahead and drop a watchtower out here. Alright, confirm that. And then I think I'm gonna put one more right over here. And, uh... Look at these peasants. They managed to spawn, despite all that. Go attack them. But anyway, we have watchtowers out here. My governor is going to arrive in Tingi. And I'm gonna just uh, disband one of these mercenary Numidian calves. The other mercenary javelins, they're not worth really paying the upkeep on right now. Alright. Now we should be able to end the turn. It's, our path is blocked here. That is a huge Britain army. Can't really say I care what they're doing though. It almost looks like they're moving towards the Germanians. Like, I don't know what that's all about. Oh, I was looking to try and get peace with these guys temporary, wasn't I? Um, let's ask for a ceasefire and request a regular tribute. Uh, I don't know, just something. Um, no, 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 hang on. <laughs> Very well. Oh, whoops. I meant to make a counter offer and I clicked the wrong button. My bad. Whatever. That was a very small penance we uh, got out of the uh, Britons, but at least it makes a ceasefire there temporarily so I can focus on Germania. The Britons will get their due. I'm not letting them off the hook, so to speak. They're a fish that's still caught. And they're going to remain caught. What do the Seleucids want from me? Have mercy. They want to become a protectorate? Any day under a white flag, further bloodshed would cost us both. We have an alliance with them and trade rights. 
If it, if it said their demands become a protectorate, I think that'd be them demanding it. They want to become my protectorate, if I understand this right. And they're at war with Egypt, Parthia, Armenia, and rebels. Let's agree to this. Oh, thanks. They will surrender a share of their income each turn in return for your protection. Okay, well, the Seleucids are now our protectorate. I, I was really hoping that I wasn't going to misread that and, and become... The, oh, Bamilcar the Conqueror. He was, he was quite the soul, and in the last bits of his life, he fought some epic battles against the Gaul to escape. That was, that was absolutely awesome. You will be missed, Bamilcar. You are a beautiful soul. Brought joy to the Carthaginian Empire. Many victories on Corsica or Sardinia, I remember it was outside careless. Good stuff. We love you. We love you, Bamilcar. Alright, so this army is retrained and ready to go fight Germanians. Speaking of that bonus in the snow, <laughs> Germanians are going to be enjoying quite the uh, the snow bonus in any fights that I have against them at the current. I got one more unit training, got the sewers nearing completion. I'll have two armies to go to work there. Bamilcar is no longer with us, but his army remains. I'm going to take his army. Start moving back towards the Gauls. And I will bring this uh, force back in here to help hold Massilia. While training troops for our new commander here. I'm going to go ahead and retrain all these units. We can get some nice like armor and weapon upgraded units. Sacred Band are going to be difficult to retrain, um, so I'm not going to pull them in at the moment. However, Libyan Infantry, I think, will be quite easy to retrain. So I'm going to pull the Libyans in. Faction leader dies. Yeah, it was a sad day. He was a uh, he was a good leader. Good leader indeed. I'm going to go continue to try and get some uh, heroic acts done with Captain Bondinal Court or whatever it is here. Hopefully we can get him promoted. Pull this unit over here and disband it. Go disband units. Um, I have one more peasant unit that we can start walking down here. Let's see what happens if we pull this army out of garrison. But leave the town watch. It should be okay, because they were okay prior to my being there. I want this army to come help, yep. Get rid of the rebels here. Listen, rebel scum. Obviously I can't um, auto-resolve this because they'll kill a whole bunch of my soldiers that I really don't deserve to have killed, so I'm gonna have to take care of this manually. There is an Egyptian chariot unit in the hands of the rebels here. They put a watchtower in out here too so we can keep a better eye on this area. But then it's not meant to be easy. It is a testing ground for men, for noblemen, and even the lowest of us is ready for this test. All right, let's go take our test. How come they didn't both go into loose formation? Okay. What in the... Thank you. I guess the uh, place where they were at on the map was making it difficult for them. Mercenaries. Alright. I'm gonna go get busy with the Numidian mercenaries. What we want to do here, if at all possible, is avoid a melee engagement with the Egyptian chariots. Um, it would be really great if I could get them to make a foolish charge and save me from having to do so. Units, 
Do a little bit of kiting here with my Numidians, like move up and then kite out. This is allowing me to get a shot at these skirmishers over here. Let's do that again. Let's just kind of make another faint movement. Stay away from the Egyptian chariots. Push up our skirmishers. We got a chance to kill some more of their skirmishers, though. Again, we got to avoid the Egyptian chariots here. All right, we got clean up on the Egypt Isle. Clean up on the Egypt Isle. Units routing. Mop and bucket, please. And I am hitting the Egyptian chariots with some javelin volleys. Make sure we keep some support around. Use the round shields for a cleanup process. Stay away from those Egyptian chariots. I just, I'm trying to weaken them up. We did knock a unit out right there. Let's go ahead and move back in. Use my Numidians to kite as best I can. Alright, the chariots are making a run at my mercenaries. Let's mop up their skirmishers real quick. So now the Egyptian chariots are all on their own. And since these are just mercenary cavalry units, um, I'm probably just going to throw them at the chariots. Got a javelin volley coming in at the chariots. That ought to do some good damage. Yep, killed a couple more of their units. And they are going to attempt to charge down my units. Throwing infantry out at them. See if we can maybe catch this chariot on the edge. Yep, there we go. It caught them. This will kind of maim their charge a little. And hopefully we can bottle them up. Like, the chariots do less damage when you can kind of bottle them up into a group where they can't keep moving, because that's how they do their damage. They do their damage whenever they're allowed to continue moving, because their scythes are going to cut your troops down while that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of these guys entirely. You can see I still lose another horseman or two in the process because of the scythes. But that's that, folks. It's, it's over. Rebels dealt with. Very few survivors for the rebels. Yeah, when you when you have the ability to deal with chariots that way, sure, you can just blob charge them there. I mean, we, we totally probably could have just blob charged them, and we would have been all right just because numbers were on our side. But hopefully you're learning a little bit about a better way to face the chariots. Oh, wait. Crap, I forgot to put a watchtower out here. Let's go ahead and just put one here. Um, there we go. Something's better than nothing. We'll take it. All right, so that means that this army will soon be able to vacate Siwa, and we'll go push the attack against the Egyptians who are suffering from plague right now, apparently. Orders. All right, we've got movement orders that need to be followed out. We have some buildings that need to be built. Boy, we are really getting up to some of the high-tier buildings. Here. It's fun. Palma, I can't do anything at Palma for now. We've built everything we can. Uh, Carthago Nova. Go with an academy. Um, let's do roads there. Roads are always good. I love how it changes on the campaign map, too. Let's put an academy at Asuka. And Lugdunum. Get sewers. Alicia. Let's drop an academy in there. And a dockyard at Cordoba would probably be appropriate. Nothing we can do at Siwa because we don't have the population to do anything at Siwa. And let's see, do we have our movement points with Hannibal? We do. Let's approach Capua, see if we can get eyes on it. There's a Roman watchtower nearby. Here is the settlement, lightly defended. It is ripe for the siege. Do they have Triari? You know, they actually don't want a ram 
I'm gonna go with a couple of siege towers and some sap points. Let's continue the siege. Okay, there's another Scipii army, which is not great for me because I only have Town Watch to protect. Um, so, not ideal. I really want this army to be able to finish soon and head home. It's only two turns until Thermone is sieged out. I could fight the siege at Thermone, but this way is much better for me in terms of forcing the Romans into a position that is very disadvantageous for them. And in a war, you should always try to force your opponent into a very disadvantageous situation. Don't fight fair, folks. Fight effective. Ooh, the SBQR Romans coming to the defense of Capua. How brave. How brave. And what have they brought with them? Principe. Good. Get a real challenge here. So they have uh, Principe, Estadi, Equites, the fact this is the Roman faction leader, Publius Maxentius. And he has brought with him his faction heir, Lentullus the Cold Hearted. Ooh, color me scared. Color me scared. So Hannibal faces off against the Roman leadership. And this should be an epic battle. I wish I could have made it a night battle, but I cannot. So this is gonna be fun. I love this. Bring on the battles. I'm hoping if we wipe out the Scipia reinforcements that it will put us in control of the settlement, though that may not be the case. Um, I think if they are 100% wiped this out, we can just walk in. Grim day. All days of battle are grim, but how much worse must the day be for our foes? They face us, the finest soldiers in the world! Alright, folks. This is a biggie. This is a biggie. We need a solid victory here. Alright, Sacred Band. A veil. Right in the middle. I've got my Libyans on the flanks in our standard setup here. We're going to have our Slingers. They are going to be providing our light infantry um, shielding in the middle so that it will protect us from any easy pillar storms that the Romans might attempt to get on us. And we've got our long shield cavalry positioned on the flanks with Hannibal supporting under center. Sounds like a quarterback call I'm making there, right? And it got Hannibal under center. It's in the shotgun formation. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, let's move up. All right, so the Romans have also moved up a little. They have some Velites that are exposed out here in the flank. I'm going to attempt a quick charge. There are Scipii reinforcements moving in. I'm going to pati patiently let my Slingers uh, play the light infantry game here. Oh, this Velite unit's going down. Going all the way down. Got wiped out. I'm going to move away from this Roman infantry because they have javelins. And then there's a bodyguard chasing me. Uh, we have the Roman leader who may be about to YOLO. Oh yeah, Roman YOLO inbound. Alright, the Roman leader just YOLO'd into Sacred Ban. He pulled out of his YOLO at the last second. But speaking of YOLO, the other Roman general is still going full YOLO. We're gonna catch him out here and get him too. Alright, the Roman faction leader just got caught on our Libyan spearmen, and we just pinched the other Roman general between our long shields. May be able to get the kill. This is risky, though, because I have an infantry unit out there. It's just a Hestadi, so we should be fine. Wow, this Roman general out here is fighting like a dragon. This is insane. He has put up an epic fight out here against my long shields and done a really good job. He did get routed just now. And the enemy general died in that combat. Wow, we took grievous losses to our long shields out here. There we go. And the Roman leader just died while charging. Got a war dog moving in here. Let's provide some support. Slinger's still doing a little bit of fighting here. They got a Principe unit. Let's fall back over here. We're about to be attacked. Alright. Let's play this smart. Let's kind of fall back. Take our victories against the Romans where we can get them. 
They are moving around my flank over here with some infantry. Let's counter this Roman general. That is a big Roman bodyguard, you know, should have had more help nearby. It's actually not a good fight for my long shields to take. Alright, Sacred Band, just um, get back in line. Unless that Equite charges. Yeah, go ahead and get back in line. Okay, getting some victory. I'm going to need some reinforcements over here. I've got reinforcements coming to help against that Roman general. Phalanx formation there. It's a pretty big battle going down right now. We did push back the Roman general over here. They have a cav auxilia out there. Spears down, get that Roman general. I think that's just the regrouped elements of the Roman faction leader that we killed. We're in a pretty heavyweight fight out here. The Sacred Band, though, is going to get that Principe. Right, we need a wrap-up over here. The Cav Auxilia charged me, apparently. This another bodyguard. Boy, our uh, Libyan Spears have gotten more than they bargained for in this fight. Phalanx and go help over here. Pull our slingers together here. It's a regrouped bodyguard. Make sure and keep Hannibal safe, but I want to charge it and reroute it. And I need this cavalry to reactivate here. Got war dogs all over us. Alright, so our, our infantry got wrapped up over here. Pour some slinger fire into this fight. The war dogs attacking the sacred band are having more effect than I want to. I'm just gonna backspace and like let my chase some of these units. I need some help over here. And then let's go into phalanx formation. I'm gonna attack these war dogs real quick before they release their dogs. This Roman general is chasing off my slingers. That's not really great for me. It right, looks like the war dogs there were defeated. I've got a sacred band in here that's doing yeoman's work. I'm going to put the squeeze on the Romans back here. I'm going to chase off some of these Roman archers. Boy, we got a massive fight. This is a huge fight. Roman bodyguards getting my slingers. That is not ideal for me. But my slingers have done great work over here getting flank shots. Epic battle, folks. Hannibal's forces getting a real test here. I get the scorpion unit. Let's go attack the Roman archers. I can't believe this Libyan spearman's still alive out here. That greedy Roman general back here chasing slingers. Let's just let him do whatever he wants. He's of little concern to me at the moment. What's this over here? A poor dog unit's already released its dogs. Cav Auxilia. Get these Roman archers back here. Let's go run down that Velite. Go get the Roman archers. Romans don't have a lot of units left. I mostly think it's just that uh, general. This Principe unit is trying to avoid my phalanx, but we're going to pinch him. And I'm going to go over here and chase off these war dogs and archers. Alright, that unit broke without having to even be in phalanx. There's another Roman infantry out here that just broke. Bring our infantry back here in case that Roman bodyguard, which it's out at the uh, limits of the battlefield. It's going to come back momentarily. The 
Roman Archer units getting bushwhacked. Prinkipe is off the battlefield. There's more Prinkipe to chase down. I'm going to keep chasing these routing units. We just got a Roman Archer unit. There's a Velite behind it. Four dogs right here as well. Alright, let's see if we can get this uh, finished up. Just some Prinkipe here, and then a couple of regrouped Scipii units, and then that general. I say that general, that's a rather large bodyguard back here. I don't know if the, uh, the general commanding it is still alive. Roman general unit, but I, yeah, so I, don't, I don't know if the Roman commander is still there. I'm gonna face him down with some heavy infantry here. Yeah, he's not gonna want to YOLO this, but I'm not gonna give him a lot of options. Alright, so the bodyguard's gonna get slaughtered. Could still be a- yeah, he's still there! There's the commander right there. He's not gonna last much longer. Up against a uh, Sacred Band infantry. Man, we're getting peppered out here by Velites. Let's attack this Prinkipe unit. Wow, Hannibal took some losses because this was a heck of a fight. But hey, we, we like these fights. This bodyguard fight's taking longer than I would like out here as well. Can you guys just shoot the cavalry auxilia for me? Thanks. That'd be great. Like, throw some rocks at them. Split up. Split up and see if we can drag this bodyguard into... Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and turn and fight, see if I can hit them in the back with some shots and finish them up. Routed everything there, some Prinkipe and then some Hastati. If we can get this bodyguard to have to stay here long enough and fight, we might be able to get lucky and route it with a couple of shots in the back. We just lost our own slinger unit there, which I expect, but... Man, we gave it a good peppering right there, but... Stay out of its way. And just skirmish off. Alright. Let's stand and fight. Just throw everything at this bodyguard. There we go. Enemy general shows his value. He is filled only by is he a desire to save yet? I don't know if we killed the commander in that unit. No, he's still alive. Get him. <laughs> Get him. I don't know if we can catch him at this point because our stuff's pretty tired, but oh yeah, we're we are gonna get him. There we go. Good. Good. Now, the only bad thing about killing that general is that if he was the last remaining Scipii character, um, it means uh, that they are going to switch over into a rebel faction, which will not actually really be to my benefit. But yeah, that was a that was a pretty crushing victory. It was a costly victory in some ways, but it was a big one. The Romans had a lot of troops. It's fought on their home turf. Not the kind of victory that Hannibal would have wanted in real life, because it would have been too costly. He wouldn't have been able to recover from it. Looks like there is still a small garrison inside the settlement. Seleucids fighting off the Parthians. They're a protectorate, so they're going to be handing us a portion of their income every turn now, too. It's kind of cool though because the Seleucids were, they're living in the home, re <laughs> I think this the Britons have already broken their treaty, their ceasefire treaty. <laughs> what a joke that was, that didn't last long. Alright, well they broke their ceasefire treaty. Can't say I'm shocked. <laughs> Can't say I am shocked. Alright, so what does that leave here, the Romans in their defense? Uh, they have their faction leader's still here. Somehow he wasn't killed in that last battle. I don't really know exactly how that happened. 
Uh, the longer we stay here, though, and wait for reinforcements, the scarier this gets. I've got two sap points and a tower. We really need to win this, though I'm going to save this for the next episode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this an end point. And the next one we start up, um, we should take control of Thermone, and we should be able to get control of Capua. And then I've got an army um, basically waiting to uh, waltz into uh, Trier here, and should be able to go ahead and do that siege now too. We'll continue that. So yeah, now we've got, um, and then we need to fight off the Britons. Um, so we've got a good episode stacked up for next time because we've got some more big fights coming. Kappa was, yeah, this is a heck of a, that was a big fight there against the SPQR Romans. So Rome is in sight, and then we also have, uh, Juba here who will be moving against the Gauls. I'm gonna kind of approach slowly here, keep an eye on what we're up against. The Gauls, I don't see their defense yet at Mediolanium. Um, so we've got a lot of good stuff coming up on the next episode. Uh, hope to see you there, Air of Carthage, signing out for now.